After coaching tens of thousands of online entrepreneurs and helping hundreds scale to multiple six figures, I can tell you when it comes to marketing, there is one thing I hear over and over and over again, and that's Kim. I am so overwhelmed with content creation. How do I create content consistently, but also run my business and close more leads and service the clients that I already have as I scale my business? So in today's video, I'm going to show you my proven content calendar system process so that you can actually attract high paying clients scale your business and stay consistent with your content without the chaos. Okay, so here we are inside my content calendar template on Trello. And the reason why I love using Trello is that it's super simple. And listen, the biggest mistake you can make when you're scaling up your company is to think that complicated system equals a sophisticated system. Actually, a sophisticated system is a simple system because you're already busy closing clients, servicing clients, generating more leads and sales. You want to make sure that your content creation process is simple. And though you can adapt this to any tool like Notion or Monday or ClickUp, it really is all about creating a process more than it is about setting up a particular tool, especially when you're already so busy. You need a system that works actually harder. And we're going to start here with working our way left to right. So I love that Trello is really simple and that we can actually create a process for producing content, starting out with your long form content ideas. And you want to start with a list like this one where you get to actually brain dump all of your long form content ideas. Master tip here. Use the questions and the conversations that just come up naturally with your clients and then research a little bit to see if those are the same questions that people have online. I love using this strategy when I'm working with clients. It's one of the ways that I get the most amount of content ideas and why I'm creating this video for you to begin with. So use your Trello board in this particular section here to Bring dump all of those questions, those ideas that come up in your interactions with clients and customers, and then you're going to move into the research part. Now, what I love about Trello and how simple it is, by the way, we're featuring here a new layout, which I'm totally digging. It's more minimal and I think it looks really cool, but essentially I will write down right here on the title, um, you know, what I'm thinking the topic should be, and then I will label it for my team based on the type of content that I want to create. If I'm going to be producing a blog, a podcast, a YouTube video, I could also just be producing a newsletter. Um, and that way I can actually label and know what is it that I'm going to be creating. I can also add more details down here. So for example, if I want to uh, create a basic outline of five ways to upsell your customer, you know, maybe I'm going to say you know, nail your offer and then I'm going to say, save them time more money, add irresistible bonuses, and you kind of get the idea. What I also love doing is once I have this basic outline of content that I might be creating, I will move that card over to the research part. Now, like my friend Sean Cannell over at Think Media always says, research before you press record. Why? Because we want to make sure that we're attracting our dream clients with our content. And if we're just publishing content that we think is cool, but they're not actually searching for or interested in, then it's a waste of time. So we want to make sure that we're researching and building that into our process. And in this research section, that's where I'm actually going to go to all the tools that I love and use. Now, if you're writing a blog, maybe you're using Ubersuggest to figure out, you know, what are the search terms that you want to rank for? If you're using a, a podcast, you might want to go look at other podcasts and see if there are similar topics or take five minutes and just quickly do a Google search or ask AI. This is a really awesome pro tip and see if there's other people who are asking similar questions on different forums like Quora or answer the public. Now, what I also love is if you are planning to scale or you already have a team in place, this is a perfect thing to actually send over to your team and start delegating. You don't need to do everything yourself, especially if, again, you're thinking about growing your business and scaling up. You want to make sure that you have tools and systems in place so that your team can support your content creation process and you don't get stuck in the day to day. So this is something that I often send to my team and say, hey, I'm thinking about creating this particular topic or this video or this blog 
blog or this newsletter? Can you go and do some research? They already know the tools that I love um, and use and tell me if people are actually, you know, interested in this topic. And, and then in the comment section over here, I'm going to expand this card real quick. They're going to tag me and let me know, hey, Kim, these are the titles that Uber suggests is recommending, or here are the titles that vidIQ uh, thinks that we should go for, or, hey, this is not really a search term on YouTube. It's not something that people seem to be interested in. So we're going to deprioritize this one idea. And that, again, is something that can save you a lot of time because now you're delegating one of those steps. However, if you want to do it yourself, please do not spend a ton of time on this. Five to 20 minutes of research is more than enough when you're getting started in your content consistency journey, especially if you are creating content solo. All right, so now that you have researched your topic, you've got the green line from your team, or you've done research yourself and notice that this is a topic that people want to hear about, you're going to move that into the production tab. You can also, in this step, as you're preparing it to move into production, um, actually add some check and some processes. So as I am getting ready to record the video or record the podcast or write the blog post, I will actually start building in some tools, some systems, some things that will help me remember what I need to do at each step. And so you'll see here, there's some cool checklists and I have already pre-created these for my setup because I don't want to have to remember all the little things, all the little steps. Oh yeah, I need to complete keyword research. Oh, I need to update the title card with the completed title for the video, right? Once I'm done with the research, I need to pick what the title is going to be. Um, and then I'm going to go in here and think, oh my gosh, you know, I need to review the outline and then I need to record the video. I don't want to have to remember all of these key steps. So instead for each portion of the production of that content piece, I already have all these checklists figured out and written in a handy format so that I don't have to remember it every single time. Instead, when I'm about to create a new content piece, right, let's go back here to the empty card. I already have these checklists set up so I can just copy them right here and I can say, okay, so what am I going to create? I'm going to create my YouTube video creation process. I'm just going to add that right here. And boom, I already have that process, that part of um, the system. And this is, you know, more advanced because we have moving pieces and an editor and a team. But for you, if it's just a single, you know, 10 step process or a five step process, this is where you get to customize it and make it your own. What you don't want to do is pretend like you're going to remember to do all the steps and also have to produce the content and be creative. Those are two separate things. We want to remove the admin part as much as possible so that you can actually sit down, create content, batch it in advance if possible, and not feel the stress and pressure to do everything on your own or at least not remember to do everything on your own. And of course, if you're part of the content calendar system program, we already have this exact board for you to actually copy into your content calendar and all of these pre built checklist that you can easily just copy and paste into your board. So it's going to save you a lot of time. Now, for those of you who are very visual creators like I am, this is what I highly recommend that you set up in your calendar. And so for me, I know I'm going to be creating at least one long form content piece every single week, and I'm going to schedule that on a particular day. I highly recommend blocking out a specific day so that you can stay consistent. And so maybe for you, it's going to be Tuesdays and you can actually create new cards right here. If you want to just add the title of the actual card, you can do it right there. And then that will be added to the list view. But you can also go back and start from an existing card like this one, check for the due date, and then move it around to whatever you'd like it to be. So for example, I can just assign this date as the 8th. And if I'm creating a new card from scratch, it's really simple. All you do is click on dates right here, and then you will select that date. You can also select a time and then click save. And so of course that's going to show up in a neat visual calendar for you so that you can easily see the content pieces that are coming up, the things that you have to get ready to publish or produce, as well as just open up the card from right there if you need to make any changes. Now going back here to the actual workflow, once you have a specific topic in production, that's when you're gonna start writing the draft or actually producing the podcast or recording 
the YouTube video, that's when things get done. And then from there, you want to move the card over to ready to publish. Now, at any point in time, this is a question I get a lot. You can click here on the labels to see all the different pieces that you're going to be creating in one fell swoop, so in one simple view. And I get the question a lot about adding photos. This is actually super easy to do. If you are a visual creator like me and you just want things to look pretty, you can always click on cover right here and then you can upload a dedicated image or just set one of their specific photos um, that they already have preloaded right here as well as a color. So you could just have a bare color and then that would be the card right here. Or again, you can shift it and just turn it into one of the preloaded photos that they have or customize it to make it your own. Now, remember that throughout the whole process, if you do have a checklist like the ones that I have in these cards, you want to be able to tick those off as you go and you want to train your team to do the same. So we are now getting ready to publish this piece. And so at this point, many things have to be completed, right? The video needs to be edited. We need to have a snippet for Instagram. We need to create GIF, edit stories, upload all the shorts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so you want to make sure that you're keeping track of that process progress where that content piece is right here. You can see six out of the 11 steps. So once it's ready to be moved and published, it means that everything is done and we are ready to go. The last bonus step here is for promotion. I think this is something that we totally forget to do. We hit publish and they were like, okay, bye. But a lot of times we need to market our marketing. And so what we'll do is we'll move it into promoting and make sure that we have posted the social media snippets, that we have shared it to our email list, that we are featuring on our website, if that's something that we are doing, right? You want to have clarity in terms of how you're going to push this out into your audience so that it gets the maximum amount of eyeballs. Now, I also love having this on hold list just for things that maybe like we're switching gears or we thought of a better content idea and it's more timely and time sensitive. So we'll move the current ones to the on hold if we need to. There's also a space for you to actually plan your micro content. This is your social media content. And heads up, I don't think that all of you need to plan your content inside of Trello. I like doing this for my long form content ideas because they're more complex, but your social media posts, you can easily just schedule directly into your favorite scheduling tool. We have tons of tutorials on the channel from Hootsuite to later to go high level. We have favorite schedulers that we use for social media. And so you can plan your posts directly there and then just have a set of ideas that you can pull from whenever you have, you know, a light bulb moment, or you have that conversation with a client. It's like, oh, I need to create a reel about that. Or I need to share this on stories. That's usually where I will just add this as a note taking place or just as a brain dump of all the different ideas that I want to then take over to my social media. The other part of this is that if you're creating long form content first, like you should, especially if you want to scale up, it's so much easier to create your short form uh, content or your social media content in a way that just clips, you know, the long form videos and post them on reels or post them on shorts, or you can take a blog post and turn it into a carousel for Instagram. There's so much more flexibility when you start creating long form first, and then you actually post on social. So you really don't need to be planning all of your social media content ahead of time, you can actually just so use your pillar content, use that long form content, and then recreate some of their smaller snippets. And you can actually plan to do that inside these cards. I also wanted to show you some conversation threads from my actual content calendar, which is basically a mock-up of what we were just in. It's, it's exactly the same for the most part. And so you'll see here, there's a converse, conversation between Belle and I. We're publishing a blog post. She's doing the publishing. I'm going in and kind of outlining those main points, writing the draft, um, and then having her publish it. So that's another thing that you should be thinking about as you grow your business is how can you just do the basics? the things that matter most, the things that only you can do when it comes to your content is how can you show up as the talent and have your team support you at every step so that you're producing content like this and then sending it to an editor and then sending it to a virtual assistant who can then publish and polish it for you. It's a process. We don't all start here, right? We start. I started doing it all myself and then I hired someone for five hours a week and then I hired my brother when he was in college and then slowly I built my team as my company became more profitable. 
possible, but it is absolutely possible. And you should be thinking about how can you outsource or get help with the things that you don't need to do with your content marketing that someone else can come alongside you and support you so that you can actually spend more time marketing and creating the content and less time having to schedule and publish it all on your own. All right, and this last tip I have for you is totally optional. This may or may not help you, but I find it helpful to have some guardrails with my content, especially with social media, and have at least some content buckets, some basic categories of the kind of content I wanna be sharing on that specific platform. Now, here's another very important thing. You should not have a ton of different social media platforms all at once. You should build one main core platform, which should be your long form platform, and then one supporting social media channel. For example, it could be YouTube and Instagram, or it could be your blog and Facebook. It does not have to be all the platforms. Actually, it shouldn't be all the platforms. That's the easiest way to burn out and not scale. So instead, what you want to think about is what are some guardrails that I want to actually have for my social media platforms? Outline those right here so that you can have clarity and a map of where you're going and what you're posting instead of just trying to come up with ideas on the fly, you at least have a basic framework of what you want to be sharing. So again, all of this is building on each other. Not only is it giving you a process and a system, it's also helping you delegate and let go of a lot of the things that inevitably burn you out and keep you from being consistent. So there you have it. That's my proven content calendar production system. And now it's your turn to actually implement. And hey, now that you have a shiny new content calendar system, it's time to level up your strategy for growth. If you want to learn how you can actually add 10 to $50,000 a month with content that actually converts week in and week out, you got to check out my free masterclass. It's going to be up here on the screen. It's right here on the YouTube channel. And it's going to help you do all of that in less than two hours a week. This is the same system that we're coaching our clients to implement inside of our coaching programs. And you're going to see case studies and ideas and actual proof of how other people are actually implementing implementing this system and adding leads and sales consistently to their bottom line without spending a ton of time in content creation mode. All right, that video is here on the screen. Make sure that you click on it and I will see you inside that masterclass. Umbeso, bye for now.